Hello, everyone. So just to introduce ourselves, my name is Marla, and I'm doing a research master of psychology at the University of Amsterdam. And I'm a member of the communication team at the Student Initiative for Open Science. Hi, my name is Mirte. Currently, I'm a PhD student at Leiden University. But uh, I founded this Student Initiative with three others uh, when we were a research master student in Amsterdam. Uh, we had a course on open science, and then we noticed that a lot of things were focused on researchers and not that much on students. And we wanted to spread open science among students. That's why we started this initiative. What this entails exactly, that's what Marla will explain. All right, so in the next few minutes, we will talk a little bit about SIOS and who we are and what we do or what we have done in the past. And then we will go more into how to start with open science yourself and also how to get involved with open science by, for instance, starting your own uh, open science initiative at your university. And we will also have some questions for you to think about. So all of you have probably learned a lot about open science uh, so far. And we have prepared some great memes that are related to that. And we were wondering if you could identify some of the problems in science on them for us. All right, um, that are some great answers, guys. So yeah, um, now you're probably studying, which means that something like a publication bias might not seem that relevant for you as students, but it might be someday. And things like p-hacking and statistical fallacies are also very relevant to you already. You probably have some research proje projects at some point, but you also have to evaluate other studies uh, already at this very moment. And you know, not only if you're a researcher, but also if you work in other areas. But the problem is that a lot of students do not know about open science, as Merger already mentioned, because most initiatives are focusing on researchers right now. So how should we become good researchers if we are not getting properly educated as early as possible? Well, our student initiative thinks that to make a good scientist, you got to start early. And yeah, that's why today we want to tell you a little bit more about our mission and maybe inspire you to become a part of the student movement. So um, this is our mission. It reads, we are data sharing. We are open access. We are reproducibility. We are open science from students for students. And what that means is that we strongly emphasize the student's perspective and the applicability of open science to your lives. That can be going into a research career, but also just going anywhere else. It's important to know how to rely on research information. By promoting open science in students um, at an early stage of their career, we aim to improve research practices in science for the long term. And we meet these aims by organizing lectures, debates, and workshops for students and strive to implement open science practices in university programs. So this is our current team. Uh, we meet via Zoom at the moment, um, as everyone else probably. And of course, it has the downside of not being with each other, but um, therefore we also have much wider reach in every possible country in the world, and that's super nice. So we have an events team and a communication team, and this is our events team. And just to tell you a little bit more about what kind of events we do. So our last event was two weeks ago now. We organized a lecture with Daniel Quintana, who is a researcher at the University of Oslo, and he gave a talk on power analysis, which is especially now that people write their thesis quite relevant to students as well. We also had lectures with Chris Chambers on pre-registered reports or um, with EJ Wagenmarkers on Bayesian statistics. Um, but besides lectures, we also have more interactive events. Uh, for instance, panel discussions where PhD students 
uh, talk about how they implement open science in their fields and their struggles with implementing that in real life. And uh, yeah, we also hold some lectures ourselves. We have an annual lecture where we just do an introduction to open science for everyone who wants to join from all fields possible. And uh, yeah, we have also some more fun events, of course, like citizen science movie nights and um, open science pub quizzes. And lastly, we also aim to do some events that are more hands on. So for instance, last year, we did a workshop on pre registration. So how can you as a student pre register your thesis, for instance, and in the future, we are planning to do a workshop on Bayesian statistics and potentially jazz. And then this is our communication team at the moment. So what we're doing here is we're focusing mostly on social media. We have a website with a lot of resources, but also with um, blog posts that we write and uh, yeah, every anything else that you have to know about science and uh, open science for students. We also have the Twitter page. Uh, Twitter is like one of our biggest uh, social media platforms because um, there's such a strong open science community there. And it's always super interesting, the debates that are going on. And we get a lot of support from there. Also from people we would never be in contact with um, if we wouldn't have Twitter basically. So that's super cool. And yeah, that supports that we have a really wide reach. And we also have Instagram and Facebook. And uh, yeah, lastly, we also bring out a newsletter every month uh, to educate a little bit about open science events that are going on and you know have some occasional comics or memes about open science. It's important. And yeah. What else do we do? We have some other projects in our communication team, such as the blog posts on preprint, for instance, that I just talked about, and uh, also how to get started with open science. And yeah, we also hold some interviews sometimes. There is the communications team. So how to start with open science outside your courses? Uh, and implement it yourself as a student. Well, why sh you could wonder why should I start with open science as a student? Well, you are the future scientists. So if you learn to do it now, you will, it will be much easier later to implement. And eventually, hopefully, it will also change the research culture going from closed to open. But what if you don't want to be a scientist? Well, you can still develop useful skills if you learn more about open science. For instance, you learn to be critical about scientific work, uh, but you also have more handsome skills such as learning to do a pre-registration, using open software, or even programming. Here are some open science practices uh, along the research cycle. It's just some examples of uh, yeah, open source software and uh, you also have preprints and open data. But what if you're not that future orientated and just want to know how can it help me right now? Well, it can help you as a student. For instance, pre-registration, you can specify your hypothesis and analysis plan before conducting your study. So once the data is there, you know exactly what to do. It's maybe more work in the beginning, but in the end, because you know exactly how and what to do, you will be more relaxed and you can just finish your analysis and uh, paper. So there are also other things you can implement in, for instance, your thesis, for instance, you could use open software um, or hopefully even make your data that you gather during your thesis openly available if your supervisor supports this as well. One of our students uh, and members of CEO's 
that implemented open science was Sandra. She did a pre-registration uh, for her thesis. So she specified her hypothesis and analysis plan before conducting her study. Her tip is that there are lots of templates on the Open Science Framework website that include instructions on what to add to your pre-registration and if basically they guide you through the whole process. One of my stories is that I used uh, our markdown to write my thesis in. So I have my code and text in the same file. Uh, and then once I have a big update and I push my changes to GitHub and GitHub is a website that tracks all my changes. So I can easily go back for to the earlier versions, which is very helpful if you made a mistake and want to go to back to an earlier version. But it also has a nice way of organizing your data and R codes, for in my case, R code, but you can also have other programming code, of course. And then later on, it might be even fairly easy to share your data and codes in a nice way. So we hope this has convinced you to start with open science as a student. So here are some tips of how to start with it. You can read more about lit in literature, uh, but if you're not really a reader, but more of a listener, you can, there are some very informative podcasts. Uh, and if you're more into open science, you can follow Twitter. There are some nice discussions on there. If you want to be more hands-on practices, then you can join on our workshops or workshop organized by others. Um, yeah, and our, um, we have a blog post by Max, one of our SEALs members, uh, about the specific literature, podcast, Twitter accounts to read, follow, and also some um, workshops you could potentially join. And the last tip is just to just do it. Join the open science community. They're very open, warm, and you can always learn something as a student. Another way of um, getting engaged as a student with open science is starting your own student initiative. And Marla will tell more about this. Yes, so in recent months or the recent year, we realized that it would be cool to have uh, a student initiative, not only for us at our university, but if every university could have their own student initiative. And we thought that we could, you know, spread science a little bit by creating a step-by-step -step guide on how to create your own student initiative for open science. And this is the step-by-step -step guide. So we have thought of eight steps that are also much common sense if you think about it. So we thought that it's important that you, of course, first of all, find some people who are interested in starting a science and then also just specify your goals and set up a plan. Not every student initiative might have uh, the same goals specifically. And then it's important to create a digital presence. So what I mentioned with Twitter before, or a website or other social media accounts. And then also find people to help your open science endeavors. So we have received a lot of support from researchers at our university, but also from outside our university. And yeah, that's really cool and really helpful. And then uh, we of course organize events. So organizing events is a big, a topic for us and then finding more members because of course it can get a lot uh, to organize those events and then assigning roles and creating a team structure is also important and creating a future outlook here is by the way a flow code so um, if you want to get access to the step-by-step -step guide uh, you can just go on the osf page where we published it with this code This is even more of a sneak peek. So in the upper left corner, you can see how we usually recruit new members. And then in the lower section of the slide, uh, you can see a hypothetical team structure, but this guide is really not 
a book of rules that we want to um, apply on you or something. It should more like be an inspiration for you guys to start your own initiative. And on the right, uh, you can see that the steps will have a little bit of an explanation as well. So yeah, we hope that is everything uh, you need. And if not, then uh, we're always super open. Um, if you could just drop us an email or write us on Twitter or on any other social media channel. Also give us some feedback on the step-by-step -step guide. We're always super happy about that as well. All right, so um, now we have a little bit of a question round. So we have two questions that we want you guys to think about. The first question is, would you consider starting your own SARS? And if not, why? And the second question is, where would you focus on in your own initiative? So we have talked to some other universities so far, and some people rather want to focus on how to implement science, uh, open science in their curriculum at their university. And yeah, there can be many different missions as well, as I mentioned before. So think about what you would focus on in your initiative. And then as Murta said, just do it. Thank you for listening. And here on these channels, you can just drop us a message. We have Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, our website, and a newsletter. And yeah, thank you. Thank you.